Imagine one day you could have every cell in your body able to be rejuvenated like that. You cut yourself, you break a bone, you lose your, your mind, you, you have a dementia. You take a course of doxycycline for a few weeks and then stop, switch it off again, and you, you, you heal. There are different levels to resetting aging. Uh, there are three levels that we know of. The first is pretty easy to reset uh, or to, to manipulate. These are the proteins that turn um, genes on and off very quickly. We call them transcription factors. Mm -hmm. And they, they basically read a gene and make a protein. That's what they do. Uh, that's level one. That's easy. Go a little bit hungry, that'll change. Level two is a little bit harder. The level two is not just changing which genes are quickly turned on and off, but actually silencing genes for, for a long time. And this is where my enzymes that we work on, the sirtuins, come into play. Let's go back to the Pac-Man. They clip off acetals off these packing proteins. You spool up the hose and it becomes, becomes locked in. That, that gene gets silenced for a long time. So to do that, you can exercise, you can diet, but you also, I think you need a little bit of help as well. What gets really interesting, and this is something most scientists don't even know about yet, is level three, the deep layer of aging. There's actually a DNA clock that tells our bodies how old we are. We, I could take your blood and read it, and I could tell you roughly when you're gonna die. What? Yeah, we can do that. What Just, are you looking for? We're looking for chemical groups that get added and subtracted to our DNA, the, the long string uh -huh. in the cell. You get chemical modifications in predictable ways as you get older, starting from conception. So even in the womb, even as a kid, even as a teenager, you're aging based on this clock that goes up linearly. And where you fit on that line is very accurate that tells you your biological age. But how do you know when the person's gonna die? What it's based on is machine learning based on thousands of people's um, code of methylation yep. on the genome and comparing that to their health and their date of death. So if you were to take my blood right now, what would you look for exactly? We would read the methylation, the chem these are chemicals, hydrogen and oxygen bound to the DNA, chemically, physically bound, um, and those accumulate as you get older in very predictable ways. In fact, they're so predictable that we can use the same clock to measure the do a dog's age and a human's age. Whoa, all based on methylation. Right. Okay, what causes methylation? Well, there are two classes of enzymes, the ones that add the methyl chemicals and those that subtract it. But imagine if we could reset the clock, not all the way back to a stem cell, but just partial reset the clock so that, so that you could go back to being 20 again. Right. That's what we're able to do in some tissues in the mouse. Right now, the way we do it is we inject a, a virus called an AAV, and this virus will target certain tissues and deliver the genes to most of the cells in that tissue. For example, we are treating aging of the eye in mice. So we can take an old mouse, we deliver a virus, the AAV, into the eye. It's a mm. tiny little prick. Um, it's the same virus that, that's used to correct genetic deficiencies in the eye right now, FDA approved drugs. So this isn't science fiction, this is out there in, in the world right now. Mm. We give it, give it to the old mice, we give them an antibiotic, antibiotic called doxycycline. Okay, same thing you might take if you got Lyme disease. And that turns on these reprogramming factors. We don't use all four of the factors, OSKM they're called, because one of them causes cancer, the M. We leave off the M, we put OS and K into the eye, turn it on, leave it for a few weeks, measure what happens to the eye, and those mice can see again, like they were young. So we've tested three different types of damaged, damage to the eye. Mm -hmm. The first one we did was a Hail Mary. So the, a lab near ours, uh, across the road, works on rejuvenating the spine and the optic nerve. Which is crazy. Yeah, because we know as soon as you're you know, a couple of months old, you're not going to regrow a spine. It's one of the first parts of the body that ages, in mm -hmm. fact. But jellyfish can regrow, axolotls can regrow an arm. We lose that ability when we're very, very young. So we, we, the question was, if we turn the clock back a lot with our OSK genes, will those nerve cells be young enough to regrow back to the brain if we damage them? Mm. And that was the experiment. They pinched the back of the optic nerve so that the nerves were defective and they started to die back towards the brain. Of course, the mice lost their vision. We then turned on our reprogramming factors. We now see that the nerves get young again, wind the clock back, 
and they regrow back to the brain. We could give ourselves the healing ability that we only had when we were embryos. And you start to think about what could this lead to? If we can do this safely, of course safe is the important word, across the body. Imagine one day you could have every cell in your body able to be rejuvenated like that. You cut yourself, you break a bone, you lose your, your mind, you have a dementia. You take a course of doxycycline for a few weeks and then stop, switch it off again, and you, you, you heal. If you turn it on at high levels, there's a lab in Spain that has shown that you can get small tumors in some animals in the kidney. So we, we've been very careful to not just blast the cell with these factors permanently. Mm. We've titrated, or what we said, brought the levels down to very low levels and switch it off when we don't need it. But we have given mice uh, this virus throughout their body. We inject it into a vein and we turn it on. We've left it on now, expecting the mice to die. A year later, they're perfectly fine. Wow. So it, it appears to be safe, but of course there's a lot more work to do. I, I'm a scientist and I'm developing drugs. I have, have to be very aware of the dangers. Sure. Please, nobody go out and try this at home at all <laughs> until we know more. But the eye is a good testing zone because it's, it's protected. And if there's a problem, it's, you know, it's shielded from the rest of the body. It won't go too far. But everything we know now is that it seems to be very safe, at least in the eye. So there are three main pathways that regulate aging in animals and probably in ourselves. There are the sirtuins that I've talked about a lot today. There's one called mTOR, which responds to how much amino acids or how many amino acids are in your body. It will hunker down and protect the body the fewer amino acids it has access to. Okay. Okay. Then the third is called AMPK, and this is the energy sensor. When your body has low levels of energy, it will allow the body to hunker down and protect itself from diseases. But why AMPK is worth mentioning is this is one of the targets, as we call it, of the drug metformin. Metformin will activate this AMPK pathway and make the body think that it's hungry when often it's not. And also keep your blood sugar levels more steady at a certain level. Okay. But it also has an, an interesting side effect is from, for a lot of people, myself included, it's a bit harsh on the stomach, mm. so it also reduces my appetite. But wh what's great about metformin is that it's been in millions of people for a few decades. So we know the side effects. It actually helps the body respond in a way to boost the energy supply. Uh, so one thing it does that's, that's undeniable is it boosts the level, the numbers of mitochondria over the long run. But in the short run, what it does is it actually poisons part of the mitochondria. So it's, it's a little bit of poison that leads to benefits down the line. What part is poisoned? Uh, it's called complex one. So that there are protons that are in one part of the area of the mitochondria in, in, a, in a membrane region. And you, the cell builds up protons. It becomes really acidic in that region, but they, the cell wants to release them. So what they do is they put little pores in between the membranes so they can leak from the high concentrated zone to the low concentration in the middle. And as they pass through that pore, it spins the pore around. And that spinning, physical spinning of that protein will generate chemical energy called ATP. That's how ATP is created. And without wow. ATP, we're dead in about 10 seconds.